Hello everybody. In this series of videos, we'll be talking about organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the organic compounds that is hydrocarbon and its derivatives. So what are organic compounds? Organic compounds are those compounds which are present in living substances or they were present in living substances one like all fuels and all those substances the rotten material which were once living they have organic compounds in them organic compounds the basic structure of organic compounds come with the word hydrocarbon hydrocarbon are the simplest of organic compounds which contain hydrogen and carbon but before we start with organic compounds let's just understand how these organic compounds were once synthesized in laboratory long long time back there was a theory which was known as vital force theory vital force theory stated that organic compounds can never be produced in laboratory there is some vital force which can you know produce these compounds but Wohler proved it wrong. He heated a mixture of ammonium chloride and potassium cyanate and he found that a reaction took place which resulted in the formation of ammonium cyanate and potassium chloride. This ammonium cyanate it underwent a rearrangement reaction on continuously being heated and resulted in formation of NH2CO NH2 this is the first organic compound which was prepared in laboratory and this compound is known as urea so after the formation of urea it gave a boost to organic scientists who started working on organic chemistry and today i think we have millions of compound of organic uh, which exist in nature so what was the unique property of carbon which led to the formation of so many compounds that a different chemistry known as organic chemistry had to be derived so they were basically just because of the three points the first point was tetracovalency tetracovalency means the ability to form four bonds carbon has got atomic number 6 its configuration is 24 it has four electrons in the valence shell and it needs four more electrons to complete its octet ultimately it starts to form four bonds to become stable and to have the inert gas configuration so the first hydrocarbon the compound of carbon and hydrogen was formed by using four hydrogens with one carbon hydrogen it shared one electron and resulted in a complete duplet this hydrogen again shared one electron and the duplet was complete the third hydrogen also shared one electron from carbon completing its duplet and the fourth hydrogen also shared one electron with carbon forming its complete duplet and the carbon it got the octet complete as a result the four bonds which were formed made it very stable these four bonds are actually referred to as tetracovalency and this further can be explained by the ability to form single double or triple covalent bonds if carbon shares one electron it forms a single bond like for example the same structure this can be related to sharing of single bonds 
But if we talk about double bond, it shares two electrons. For example, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Again, another carbon with four electrons. Now, this is shared with one hydrogen. This is shared with another hydrogen. This is shared with another hydrogen and this with the fourth hydrogen. But carbon, in order to have its octet, it shares two electrons from two hydrogen and two electrons from one carbon. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now here, in this case, it shares two from this carbon, two from this hydrogen, two from this hydrogen, and ultimately, it results in the sharing of two electrons from carbon, which results in the formation of a double bond. Similarly, it can share three electrons forming a triple bond. How does it form a triple bond? Carbon, again, it has only four electrons, but it shares one electron with one hydrogen. This carbon shares one electron with one hydrogen and it shares three with the other carbon atom. So it results in the completion of octet three, three, six, and two, eight. Hydrogen shares one electron and complete its duplet having two electrons. This hydrogen shares two electrons forming its duplet. And this carbon again shares three electrons from this carbon forming a triple covalent bond. And this triple covalent bond makes it stable. So that means carbon has the unique ability to form single, double, or triple covalent bond. The third property by which carbon atom is extremely stable that is the property to catenate and we call it as catenation. Catenation is the process in which carbon atoms get linked to other carbon atoms forming a straight chain. It can even get linked to other carbon atom forming a Branching. And it can even form ring like compound. So, here it's a closed structure with six carbon atoms, and this is known as ring chain compound. Or even we can call it as ring like compound. Thus, let's just summarize out the unique property of carbon helps it to form million of compounds and these million of compounds are just because of its unique property to have tetracovalency that is having four electrons in the outermost shell. It has this property to form single, double or triple covalent compounds and then the most important is catenation where carbon can get linked to other carbon atom forming straight chain, branch chain or ring like compounds. Organic compounds, they can be broadly classified into two types. These two types are open chain compounds and ring like compounds. Open chain compounds are those where ring is not there, it is straight chain or branching. And ring like compounds are those where closed chains are there. Open chain compounds are also known as aliphatic compounds or acyclic compounds. These are further split into three types where we have saturated and the perfect example of it is alkane and these two are unsaturated and they are composed of alkenes 
and alkynes. Alkanes are the compounds which normally have single bond in them. Alkenes are the compounds which have double bond. And alkynes are the compounds which have triple bond. Let's just take one example of each. For example, if I take ethane. Ethane has formula C2H6. And this is how it can be stated. So this bond which is present between two carbon atoms is referred to as single bond. In alkene, let's take the example of ethene. We have a double bond and then carbon is always stabilized by four bonds. So we will have C2H4. This is ethene. And then we talk about triple bond. We have C triple bond C and with this we have one carbon on either side and it gives a structure of C2H2. This is ethane. So ethane is a compound which is saturated and with a single bond. This is ethene. Ethene is a compound which is unsaturated with a double bond and this is ethyne. Ethyne is a compound which is unsaturated but with a triple bond. Now we come to ring-like compounds. Ring-like compounds are also known as cyclic compounds. And these cyclic compounds can be further divided into two parts. The first is alicyclic compounds. And the second category is aromatic compounds. Alicyclic compounds are basically ring-like compounds but having single bond, double bond or triple bond. So if we talk about alicyclic, we have cycloalkanes, we have cycloalkenes and we have cycloalkynes. If we talk about aromatic, we talk about those which have alternate single and double bonds. And these compounds obey Huckel's rule. Let's take one example of each. If we talk about cycloalkane and we take about butane. Butane is a compound with four carbon atom. This is Cyclic because it has got ring-like compound. Uh, we have one single bond. So we need two hydrogen because here one bond, one bond and two hydrogen makes four. Again CH2, CH2, CH2. So this is an example of cycloalkane where single bond comes in between. If we talk about cycloalkene, let's have a double bond. Then one, two, three, and it needs only one hydrogen. One, two, it needs two more hydrogen. One, two, it needs two more hydrogen. And it needs one because, again, it has got three bonds. So this is an example of cycloalkene. And this is cyclobutene. This is cyclobutane. And if we talk about cycloalkyne, So it has got a triple bond and one bond over here. So that makes four. So it doesn't need to have any hydrogen. But here it will have two two hydrogens. And this structure is cyclobutane. If we talk about aromatic compounds, aromatic compounds are those which have got alternate single and double bond. And they obey Huckel's rule. Huckel's rule is having 4n plus 2 pi electrons. So that means if we take n is equal to 1, so the electrons it needs to have is 4 into 1 plus 2, that is 6 pi electrons. And pi electrons are the electrons which are present in double or triple bond. So if we have the simplest structure, we will have 6 carbon. 
arranged in the form of hexagon and since we said alternate double and single bond this is the double bond single bond double bond single bond double bond single bond now each carbon has got three bond one two three so it needs to be associated only with one hydrogen one two three it needs to be associated with one hydrogen and similarly for all the carbon atom so i can even write down this compound as ch with alternate double and single bonds and the third way to represent this is a hexagon it is understood that at each position each joint there is one carbon and double single double single and double bond and this compound is known as benzene as urea was the first organic compound to be discovered in laboratory similarly benzene was the first organic compound to be discovered